investigators and was taken to jail. Jail records show he's facing one count each of organized scheme to defraud fifty thousand dollars or more and first degree grand theft. And as of Wednesday, he's being held in the correctional center where his bond has not been posted or determined. Listen, man, there is a sector of our society that you are not supposed to steal from. Yeah. You know, you can you can, you know, you can jack some chips here and there. You can sell stupid classes to poor people on Instagram. You can do all that. But there's a sector of people you're not supposed to do that to. You're not supposed to do that to. And and, and he just found out. The, they said per each. What if he did that 100 times? They're going to give him five years each. Could be. I mean, because my thing, too, and it's funny. We used to say or not. We used to say, but you hear people say all the time. Oh, the dispatchers are stealing. The brokers are stealing. Like, no, this is proof that these companies really be or people within these companies, I should say, really be scamming people. So how many drivers didn't get paid from him doing that? Right. That's crazy, man. How many how many customers of theirs did they burn a bridge with because he was doubling up on invoices? How many people are pocketing your detention pay? <sighs> oh my God. Your how layover many, pay. How many, how many fake rate cons are people getting out here? That's craziness, man. Because I'm crazy. I mean, he's he got caught, but trust me, he's not the only one doing mm -mm. this, bro. Mm -mm. No, no. And the truth is. They say oh, drivers quit because drivers quit because of shit like that. Exactly. Because when and just imagine too, uh, think of think of how many companies. I mean, yeah, he was doing this behind the company's back, but just imagine how many companies are in on it, where it's a whole plot from top to bottom to skim off the drivers. That's crazy. I mean, what do you think a year out of the total of all drivers in the game? Yeah. What do you think? the tally is for all the layover breakdown and oh, attention man. pay of the whole industry as a whole millions millions of dollars i mean think about this how many how many companies out here and i'm not i'm not pointing to just one because there's multiple that do it but think about all the companies that pay flat rate for cpm or or at least for like, you know, owner operators, lease operators. Think about how many companies pay flat rate. Think about how many of them for both company and lease have sliding scales. Mm. Oh my God. Like some of these, oh, how many of, these of those? Practices, how, oh, if yeah. you go under a hundred miles, you get a flat hundred dollars. And then you find out it's like boar's head meat and they're getting like five grand a load. Oh my God. Or you paying a dude a hundred dollars, bro for some of the some of the more niche people with some some years on them you go to a company and they say oh we're, we're paying you percentage but you, you're what? not seeing the rate con right you're, you're you're they're saying percentage but you're telling me what i'm getting a percentage of yeah that should be a conflict of interest like for example you know some of the places i've worked for is like oh you get as a company driver it's like oh you get 30 percent of the load and you're like, okay, so how much does the load pay? Oh, it pays, you know, two thousand dollars, just for example. When in reality, it could be paying as much as thirty-five to five thousand. Six. Yeah. I, I, what I do is I double it and add a thousand. So they sell yeah. you two, four, call it five thousand dollars. Exactly. Because people think, oh well, mega care your uh, freight is cheap. No, it's not. It's no. cheap when it gets to the driver. That's a fact. But the truth is. They have four dollar, five dollar a mile contracts with huge places. Yeah. You're just not getting none of the money. <laughs> You're hauling it for free, bro. And here's a trick too, for for the company to say that. Oh, we we show you the the rate con or whatever. If if you don't see. And mind you, this just goes to transparency. If you're not seeing the brokerage on the invoice that it's coming from, they're probably taking advantage of you. Because if you're getting getting so called rate cons and it's your company's logo that you work for, yeah, what's the what's the chance they, have they haven't edited the invoice? The, the, the truth is that they that, that's just a template to send it. The truth is they feel like you don't deserve a rate con. You're not even in the position to get a rate con. Yeah, you know the truth. At least drivers are not required to get rate cons, bro. Right. You know you're supposed to be your own. You know uh, carrier have your own numbers, and then you're required to get a rate con. Right. But you, you're not supposed to get a rate con. Most regular lease drivers don't know what a rate con is. Oh, man. Yeah. The little computer just says line haul. 
Yeah. <laughs> and fuel <laughs> surcharge, which, oh my God. <laughs> which is, and my, mind you, I'm going I'm, I'm to probably get killed for this, but I'm going to say it. Fuel surcharge is a scam, bro. Really? I mean, with the exception of, of like your sector where it's the real deal. Yeah, they most. Get most general freight, I feel like when they give you a rate and it's like, okay, we're going to pay you this much for rate con and this much for surcharge, or you'll see a, a company advertisement. It's like, oh, we'll give you a uh, 70% of line haul and 100% fuel surcharge. Where does that make sense? Like, think about it from a business perspective. How is the company making a profit if they're going to give you 70% of, or excuse me, yeah, they're going to give you 70% of the load they booked and then turn around and give you all of the fuel? Where yeah. where would that make sense to me? Especially if they're so-called offering you a fuel discount. They're already benefiting from the fuel difference anyway. Mm. So and then when they tell you, oh, it's all in, that's that's all, where, where's the fuel? Oh, it's already in the line hall. Right. And then uh, like thinking about it from a business perspective, the times I have been an owner operator, when I called brokers to to offer, uh, nego and, excuse me, to offer and negotiate rates, we weren't calculating line haul. It was just what is the whole thing? Yeah, it's my responsibility to, to calculate the fuel adjustment. That's why I'm offering a rate. Mm. So where would where would that make sense to me? If you're not actually paying the real value of what it costs for me to move this freight. Now, I could see if it was like, OK, what is your estimated fuel bill? Then it's like, OK, it's going to cost me nine hundred dollars to go, you know, eight hundred miles or something like that. I'm just throwing numbers out there. I don't know what fuel prices are. I haven't had to pay attention to that for a while. But let's just say, matter of fact, I'll make it easy. Let's say you're going twelve hundred miles. We know that's a tank and a tank and a quarter. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's say average full tank of fuel costs. I don't know, seven fifty, eight hundred dollars, and with then no discount, yeah, right, with no discount. Let's say seven fifty, eight hundred dollars at the pump, and then you know, you like I said, you have to get about a quarter tank to do the rest. So let's just call it another two hundred dollars on that thousand dollars to go twelve hundred miles, mm -hmm. right? So, at me, my responsibility as a business owner, I have to calculate that into the rate that I'm already negotiating for, plus the other additional operating costs like you know insurance, if you got a truck note, all these other little things, these nuances, in order for it to make sense for me to be profitable to move this freight, right? So, just me, just just thinking in a simple business standpoint, why would I need to nickel and dime that when I can just negotiate a whole price? Yeah, but see, the problem is. Even if you're negotiating based on wrong numbers, so that wouldn't even work still, right? So if you if he comes to you and shoots you at thirty five hundred, yeah, and you're negotiating, oh, make it four, but the load's really paying eight thousand dollars. Like you can't yeah. you can't negotiate if the information that is the person that is responsible for paying for you should not be the person responsible for paying for you should not be the one showing you what it pays. Mm. That's the conflict of interest. The truth is, you as the carrier, yeah. once he said, once you say, "Hey, man, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna," once the broker says, "Boom," we should be getting our stuff from the customer, right? Because the customer should just be mirroring what they sent them. All right, we sent them this eight thousand dollars, right? And then you will be in the position to negotiate. But no, they send it out, and then he says, "Oh, this is what it's paying." You're the dude responsible for paying me. You shouldn't be able to see it before me, right? Especially so, when I had the liability of of caring for the freight in the first place. I have the liability of caring for the freight in the first place. I have the liability of holding the insurance over the freight. Yeah. <coughs> I have the liability of not crashing it. I have the liability right. of keeping the truck maintenance. So why do you get to sit at a desk with no overhead? Yeah. If you just have a brokerage, a brokerage um uh, authority, you don't have no real overhead. You don't you don't have like you're not burning fuel, you're not burning tires. Right. Only overhead you got is to hope I don't crash, mess up your CSA score, and to, to keep the insurance or whatever insurances you need and the lights on. You don't have yeah. any overhead, bro. Gen generally speaking, uh, brokerage has very fixed costs. I mean, yeah, sure, there's some startup costs like you know right. establishing a business, the bond, things like that. But once that's all said and done, you know, it's <laughs> it's a phone and a laptop, bro. Like <laughs> that you already had, <laughs> right? That you already had. I've seen the brokerage stuff. It's just a software you put on a, a, already a computer with eight gigs of RAM. It does not have to be a nice computer. Right. So those are your fixed costs. But since you're in the white collar position, you get to, oh, oh, this is what the price is. Why am I believing you? Why can't I? Let me talk to the customer. Oh, no, we don't do that. Why? Yeah. 
And then if you go to the customer, they're going to tell you, yeah, uh, all right, um, each one of these loads is $7,500 a piece. And he's mm-hmm. telling you 1900 Right. That shit is a that that is so wrong, bro. It's the it's the it's the wolf it's the it's the wolf in the hen house. And here's the trick that that some of these brokerages have have positioned themselves for is like I've I've heard stories of independents like full operating carriers. They'll go to negotiate with some of these customers or try to inquire about getting you know freight from them directly, and they're like, oh well, we only deal with brokerages. Why? Why? Why is that? Because they're fucking in on it, bro. They're fucking in on it, dog. They're in. The truth is, transportation costs is a major, major part of their business. That and their and their damn their their mandate in the boardroom is to drop that cost at any means necessary. Oh my god, that's their main thing. So yeah. if someone comes up and say, "I can run this for a thousand dollars cheaper per load," you know they'll go for that, and then. It, it, it it comes to a point where the person with the least rep, 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 uh, representation, which is the blue collar person, gets yep. staff as they say shit rolls downhill. That's a fact. So they're cutting your money so they both can keep more money. Yeah, and, and I've you're heard, supposed to keep doing it for twenty years. Right. I've heard okay. stories where where these brokerages, when it's time for the customers to negotiate their their freight contracts for the quarter for the year, whatever. I've heard that these. Uh, broker representatives will go in and underbid each other. It's like, oh, oh, I can get all this freight move for twelve hundred dollars a load. Right. You know, they then, know they have enough suckers on their team to get it done, or enough people desperate to actually move freight. Right. For that that's cheap. also why they hold that shit. There's just probably fields of loads that's just held until they can get the best number on it. Oh, absolutely. And it's like, they, and then they'll they'll just use excuses while well, they'll hold these loads in contempt until they eventually have to either a raise their rate and take the L, or they end up losing the uh, contract they negotiated for because they can't get it moved for that cheap. Come on now. And then your bonds in trouble, and it's a whole you know it's a whole it's paperwork a whole, process, a whole kitten ka fucking boodle. That's a and fact. Then, then when you're when you're angry and frustrated because you don't understand why nothing's adding up. People yeah. come around and say, you failed. Right. I failed. <laughs> Trucker Brown here. I'm just here to remind you that we are on Patreon. And it does help out the channel. Thanks to all the people who sub to the Patreon this weekend. I appreciate you. New content is coming there. And these clips that I'm giving you are from the exclusive Trucker Report Live that I do with Phil, which is link is at the bottom on Rumble TV Uncut. So I appreciate y'all. Love the support. If you like the content, man, hit the buttons. Let me know. Thanks for coming to the Patreon.